Ah, summer. The temperatures go up, but the pollen goes down, so there's an even trade-off there. But the ever-changing TBR comes into clear focus. Let's talk about mine. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another TBR video. This time we're going to be talking about the summer of 2021. This is, of course, going to be July, August, and September of this year. I said I think a lot of other channels out there, they like to do a TBR every month because it's ever-changing me. I'm locked into so many read-alongs and things like that. I feel like I can get mine a little more focused. So I said I don't feel like the need to do this every month. So let's do it like every season, I think. Now, obviously, things did change a little bit due to that... Uh, Malazan revised schedule that we had to do. We had to move some books up and just kind of get that schedule a little more uh, streamlined. So it did change things a little bit. But other than that, I think we're usually sticking pretty good to these TBRs. So you can make all your jokes about how my TBR never changes, stuff like that. That was true about a year ago. I feel like it's usually, at this point, I'll add things, but I rarely take them off unless there's something very altering like that Malazan schedule. So now things are into a clear focus we can talk about it. let's begin like we usually do with the month of july now i had lisey's story on here guys but i already finished it uh, i started reading it in june and finished it like uh, on the july 1st i think or something like that i don't know days are all kind of bleeding together right now because uh, i'm off work but uh yeah i uh, had lots of thoughts and opinions about lisey's story on the last weekly update so if you're curious about that go check out that video where i talk about it uh, a little bit at length because Into the Multiverse is going to be years from now before I get to that one. So I won't be doing an actual review of that. Now, as for what I'm reading right now, I started reading Demon in White. This is the third uh, Sun Eater book, about 130, 140 pages into it. And that's nothing with a book like this. It's uh, always going to be quite a bit. But uh, I've been a champion now for uh, Mr. Rocchio for a while. And it's not just because he is a great, great human being, but he is a fantastic writer. And his story is very, very compelling to where I think anyone should uh, give it a shot because anyone's going to enjoy it. Very good science fiction series. And this is like one of those things where uh, I really want to see this guy succeed because he is super, super talented. And I think more people give him a chance, the more they like him. And I, uh, I'm actually kind of upset because when I finish this, I don't have the next book to reach for. But I paced myself just fine with those books for that very reason but uh, kingdoms of death that's book number four comes out next march so we're not that long of a wait really uh then we'll be doing the uh the michael crichton read along for the month of july is going to be sphere and that's the last one that's a collection here and then i've got the big boy novels the rest of the way i have to keep using these uh these collections i got but uh sphere in my memory is one of my favorite michael crichton books uh like i said i read it when i was a teenager so i don't know how it's going to hold up or whatever but judging from the chatter on the discord yes the discord guys join the discord if you haven't you can talk about these books and these read-alongs with other readers and a lot of the people that have already started sphere have very 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 complimentary things to say about it uh so reread for some and they're saying it's just as good if not better than they're younger and it's the first time read for others and they're saying it is really really good so in my memory like i said that is a mind-altering book it's just very very trippy and it'll blow you away at the end and it sounds like it's going to feel the same way on this reread. So I'm very excited to dip back into that. And then the second Poppy War book, guys, I'm doing one per month, June, July, and August. This is the Dragon Republic. And these covers are so white, they probably aren't even... Ooh, that makes, makes the camera go out of focus because they're so white. But uh, it, uh, yeah, I like the Poppy War a lot. Uh, I had my gripes about it, like everybody else did. There's lots of gripes about the protagonist, about a, a few YA tropes. But guys, it's not a YA book. I think that's hilarious that people are trying to say it's one. I, I think people now assume that if you have adolescent characters that your book is YA. Guys, it's about the content. It's not about the age of the characters. Uh, I, I think people really have lost sight of that. Uh, yeah, it's a very adult book. It's a very, very dark fantasy. And I, I think that... Uh, well, read it and figure out for yourself. I imagine it's going to stay that way with the Dragon Republic. Now, uh, the reason I had to change some things around the schedule, you might notice, hey, there's no Into the Multiverse book this month. Yes, I had to scoot uh, needful things back a little bit because I wanted to make sure I left room for... Now, look, I am supposed to be getting an advanced reader copy of Wisdom of Crowds. That's the last book in the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Joe Abercrombie, like Stephen King, he puts out a new book and goes straight to the top of the list, right? So I want to make sure that I left the space for this in case... Orbit does get it to me uh, uh, 
on time. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say anything disparaging about that. I'm just saying that a lot of times uh, I've been working with publishers. They've been like, oh, yes, we'll send you the review copy. And then it gets there and then it's, it's radio silence from them. And then three days before it comes out, like, oh, did you still want this? Yes. Yes, I do. So um, uh, I've talked to Mr. Abercrombie himself. He's made sure that I'm on the list. Uh, so I should be getting it, uh, hopefully, in the first wave with everyone else to talk about that book. Because the end of the second First Law trilogy Third, if you count those standalones, but this is an actual trilogy, not standalone books. Uh, it's very, very exciting to know what's going to happen. And of course, I want to make sure I keep the schedule flexible enough that when that shows up, everything else can wait. So that's why I've kind of done it this way. A uh, new thing I'm kind of doing on the channel is I'm really on the channel just as much as my TBR because I don't know how much of I'm going to cover on the channel. Depends. It depends. I don't think that uh, comic stuff is obviously all of a sudden interesting for my viewers as much as it's just Berserk is something that's very, very popular around the web. So I'm going to continue to read Berserk. Uh, I, I, I'll continue to cover that because people have requested it so much. But I'm also reading Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. Now, this is a reread. I read this for the first time, like, in the late 90s, and it completely blew my mind. You know, I loved it. It was right up there with, like, Preacher is, like, one of my favorite ever. And uh, it's something that I'm having a great time revisiting. Uh, I, I wanted to kind of get back into it before the Netflix adaptation drops because, you know, it's just I need a refresher on everything. So uh, I'm having a great time doing that. I'm kind of actually doing that uh, whole immersive reading thing that people talk about all the time. Uh, and hey, Scott. And it basically, it's uh, where you listen to the audiobook and, and you, you look at it at the same time. Now, I won't do that for the words, for, for text, a regular book. Because I'm like, at that point, why am I not just reading the book? You know, I, I struggle with audiobook, guys. I, I really, really do struggle with audiobooks. I can't do it. Uh, I don't care how good they are either because James Marsters, yes, he's fantastic. Big Buffy fan. I love James Marsters. That's my guy. But uh, yeah, I listened to Dresden, one of those Dresden Files uh, side, side jobs, I think it was called. I had no idea what I just listened to. So it's, it's really just a, a thing, guys. I just can't I can't focus on audiobooks. I have to, to actually read the book. But with this, I think it's really cool because you have that visual medium of a comic, obviously. So it's almost like watching one of those motion comics they put out back in the day with a, I think they did it with Watchmen, and uh, it's, so it's really really cool listening to that audio, audible production. It's for the first three trade paperbacks of of the Sandman, so I'm gonna listen to that far and then wait for the other ones to be released. So that's the plan right now is each month to kind of litter in some some manga, some comics, some graphic novels to kind of you know take the edge off when you're reading a really really heavy heavy series and uh, you need kind of a a mental break for a minute. I think that a graphic novel or something like that's really really good for your psyche. Now August. August. August is a Malazan month, guys. We're doing every other month for Malazan books, and we'll be getting into Midnight Tides for that month. So that'll be kicking off on August the 1st. Everybody starts the same time. I think that really helped with House of Chains because honestly, guys, a lot of people struggle with House of Chains. And I think without that support system, a lot of people would have tapped out. So again, check out the Discord and jump on for the read along if you are still doing that. Uh, Midnight Tides is one I've heard a ton about. about some people I feel like most people love it, except the people who are just are mad because it's a completely new cast again. It just kind of seems to be what he's going to do. Uh, every other book or so, he's going to just change the cast. So uh, I'm going knowing that going in uh, kind of helps me a little bit. But it's one of the. It's funny to say that a book this thick is one of the shorter Malazan books. So <laughs> there we go. But uh, yeah, we'll continue that read along there. Uh, I'll be kicking off into the. Uh, I'll be taking that. I'm starting on the first. Don't get me wrong. But Stephen King has a new book coming out that week, too. So I'll probably be split in time there. August the 3rd. What a birthday present, right? I can't wait. Uh, Billy Summers, because I loved Later. And if Billy Summers is half as good as Later, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun summer. So the new Stephen King and uh, Midnight Tides will be what I'm doing that beginning of August before we get into some of the other stuff like the uh, great Michael Crichton reread. And uh, this is one I don't think it needs an introduction, guys. Jurassic Park will be the one for August this month. And my kid's actually excited about this because he's like, he wants to watch the movie again. I'm like, we can watch the movie now. He's like, no, 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 no. I'll wait for your read along. So, you know, bless him. But uh, Jurassic Park is one I think a lot of people who have been kind of standoffish on joining the Crichton reread are saying, well, you know what? I've never read that. I love the movie. Maybe now is a good time to do that. I've seen a lot of people on the server posting pictures they've been picking up Jurassic Park so I hope that they will join us I hope you will join us in August because the book is better than the movie and the movie's amazing you guys but the book is something else it really really is a little more a little more horror I think than that movie is and then we'll be finishing off the Poppy War trilogy with The Burning God now this is a divisive book I mean people who love the first two 
a lot of people have said they didn't like this, but a lot of people say they, they, they love it. So I'm interested to see where I fall on it. I, I love the artwork on these books. I just don't think it's coming through in the camera. Uh, I, I love good charcoal drawings and stuff. That's why I like some of those things in Berserk of the charcoal drawings. So beautiful. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens because um, whenever you have an ending that's that divisive, uh, to me, a lot of times, <laughs> my sick, twisted heart with Grimdark is like, oh, well, that's just because they're giving you the medicine that you need. You don't want to take it. That's how I feel about like about the end of uh, the end of the first law trolls. People were like mad about the ending. I'm like, yeah, well, you need to take your vitamins. Damn it. Uh, that's kind of how I am with Grimdark. So I don't know if that's why or not. We'll see. We'll see. I'm interested to find out. But uh, yeah, uh, then there's one. I, I kind of had that opening because I did move into the multiverse back a couple of months to give myself some breathing room. So depending on where I get Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie, I should be moving some of this stuff up or down depending on that. But a lot of people on the Discord are doing a read-along for Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. And I said, you know what? Why not? I could join that for sure. Uh, I don't have a copy of it. But when I said I was going to join one of, uh, one, of my, uh, one of my people on the Discord, Lockie, a uh, great, great guy, said, hey, don't buy it. I just bought it for you. So thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. So people obviously are very excited about me to join this. I've only read The Road by Cormac McCarthy, but I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I always said I would read some more. I thought it'd be No Country for Old Men I read next, but it looks like it's going to be Blood Meridian. And you know, I'm I'm iffy on Western stuff. I love Westerns as movies, but books I've never been able to, sort of like Dark Tower, which is loosely a Western, I've never really been able to get into Western. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, like I said, I, I like the road a lot. So I'm interested to see how this goes. As for the comic manga graphic novel for the month of August, I will be dipping into Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga is one that has been recommended to me for a long time based off of my love of the TV series Vikings and The Last Kingdom. Everybody has said it is basically the uh, the, the manga version of those two shows. So, uh, hey, you got Vikings. You got my attention already. I, I've looked. I've got the series. I looked at the, some of the art. It looks fantastic. I can't wait. So, uh, yeah, um, I've really, really opened my eyes to some of the manga out there. And uh, I think I've been seeing what I've been missing now. So I'm, I'm glad to keep littering some of that stuff in through the months here. Plenty of... Uh, uh, options to go back to and look for and, and Vinland Saga has been recommended almost as much as Berserk was to me so uh, exciting times ahead. Now some of you might remember that I had this thing planned for September that I was calling Sci-Fi September. I was planning on taking a break from everything else and just devoting the entire month to just Sci-Fi. Changing the Malazan schedule really kind of screwed that up. But I am still going to try to get some Sci-Fi stuff in this month. Before that starts, I'm going to do my book of the month for uh, for Mr. Crichton. And the reread the re is going to be Rising Sun. So then after that, it's going to be all Sci-Fi the rest of the way. But Rising Sun is a book I think when I was a teenager, I'm not sure how much I really got. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, because it was one of my lesser favorites of his. I liked it, but the thing was, I never read like Tom Clancy and Jack Ryan, stuff like that. So I, I was never really into much things like that. And this was much, much different than the science kind of stuff that he had done up to that point. So uh, I'm looking forward to revisit and seeing if it, uh, it feels different to me now, because sometimes it's just like when you're a teenager, maybe that's just not what you were kind of looking for with a Michael Crichton book, especially after Jurassic Park. It wasn't exactly what we were looking for. So I'm very much looking forward to that revisit and seeing if it changes my opinion over time. I didn't dislike it. Like I said, I think there's a lot of things I just didn't get. You know, it's just going to happen when you're younger. Uh, but then we get into kind of some of the uh, sci-fi things here. And yes, it's because Moid over Media Death Cult picks on me and tells me I don't do sci-fi. But uh, speaking of Moid, we're going to be doing a read-along on his channel. So guys, if you haven't checked out Moid's channel, check it out. Uh, this is going to be Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. I've never read Arthur C. Clarke before. I have 2001, but never got into it. But uh, a lot of people said this is the better place to start with him. Uh, so Moid doing a, a nice little channel read-along there is a perfect time, I think, to do that. So if you guys want to join us, you know, hop on and do that. Uh, myself, I'm a huge, huge Ray Bradbury fan. I think Ray Bradbury is one of the greatest writers of, the, of that last of that generation it re really was just just magnificent a wordsmith he could take something absolutely horrifying and make it beautiful he could take anything and make it beautiful with his writing style and in my memory the martian chronicles is just phenomenal just one of the greater sci-fi books I've ever read. So I'm looking forward to revisiting this one for Sci-Fi September. Um, I, I wanted to redo uh, Fahrenheit 451 this year, but uh, I decided to do this to stick with the Sci-Fi September theme. But guys, if you haven't read any Bray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes, Martian Chronicles. Uh, what did I just say? 
<laughs> Fahrenheit 451, one of the greatest books ever that more people need to read for sure. Uh, so uh, yeah, check out Ray Bradbury if you haven't. And to wrap up, Sci-Fi September, why not do it with the greatest science fiction book of all time? Yes, guys, if you don't know, this is my favorite book of all time. I don't know how you wouldn't know that if you've watched anything on the channel because I talk about it constantly. There's a movie adaptation coming out of this, finally. I don't know if you heard about this, in October. And I thought, what a better time to revisit Dune than right before that movie. And guys, this will be the 13th time I have read Dune. I used to read this about every every two years or whatever. I kind of backed off. I haven't read it since I started the channel, but I'm very much looking forward to revisiting and talking with you guys as I go through it because there are a lot of people who are still kind of like, I don't know, but I told them I'm going to be reading this in September. Like, okay, finally, I'm going to do it now because you, I, I want to read along with you. So uh, I'll have that conversation on full blast on Discord, and I will be doing my full-on re uh, review and a, definitely a spoiler review before we get to the movie release, and then I'll be doing a review of that movie and a spoiler review of that movie. And so there's going to be lots of coverage for Dune here this fall, so I hope you guys will check it out because this book means the world to me, and I want to talk about why. I mean, I already did my Why You Should Read on Dune, obviously, but if you still want to know more, it's coming. So uh, I always got room to talk a little more. Frank and Dune. So guys, that'll be Sci-Fi September. There is, uh, of course, another manga that I want to kind of wrap in in September. And this is one that's come very highly recommended to me. And I know there's going to be some people be like, oh, all you're reading are these super popular manga. Well, look, you guys wanted me to read manga, right? You carried on for years now for me to read manga. And now you're telling me, oh, well, you're only reading the popular stuff. Is this like, like getting someone to Metallica and they only listen to the Black Album or something? I, I, I don't know. Death Note is the one I've got here. And I've heard a lot of people being like, oh, you're just reading like the bandwagon ones. Well, look, get over it. These are the ones that people have recommended to me the most because they think that I will like them. Death Note is something obviously I've heard of way before I was going to read it. So it probably has that legacy for a reason. There's lots of these manga that I'm going to read because they're so popular. Obviously, if you want to recommend stuff to me that uh, that is kind of under the radar, well, let me get through some of these big heavy hitters first and then I'll get to it. But I, I have no idea what to expect with Death Note. Uh, the, the art looks fantastic. So uh, I, I'm, I'm interested to find out. And uh, there are some more things though before we go. So that's the end, right? I mean, you've done I mean, your, your, your three months, right? I do have some that I got considered as standbys. If I, it's kind of like being on the waiting list when it comes to uh, getting into a college course or something. If I have time or I have room for you, uh, these are going to be your first alternate that you're going to let in here. These are not ranked in any order or whatever. It just kind of depends on the mood that I'm in. If I've got room, if I'm ahead of my schedule, I'll fit some of these in. I finished Writer Revelations, so obviously I'm very interested in starting Michael J. Sullivan's uh, This is uh, Age of Myth. It's the first book in Legends of the First Empire. He did send me this, this handsome, handsome collection. And that kind of upped my <laughs> interest in reading them sooner than later. So uh, it was, I love Michael J. Sullivan books in the way that you they always kind of feel like comfort reads. You can just pick them up whenever and you can understand everything that's going on. And you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to clear a complete uh, filing cabinet in the head up there, just like a folder will do, is how I put it. Because the way that he does his stuff is he has his myths, he has his lore, he has his legends and stuff like that. But it's never to a point where you're like, okay, I got to completely forget everything I've, else I know about and kind of just you know, just put this as top priority. I feel like his books are smooth that way. They're very approachable. So I feel like I could fit that in. Even though, I, even though I am like, are you really going to start another six book series? Just is like a side thing. Well, I took a year and a half to read Rare Revelations. Because like I said, I feel like they're very good comfort reads. Uh, next up, uh, Life of Pi is one I've wanted to read for a while. I love the movie to death. And my wife loved the book. So I, I said I'd really much like to do it. Uh, Richard Parker, what a fun, fun story. Uh, I mean, it's about as fun as a story to get. I love survival survival stories. So uh, yeah, this one had a, a ton of heart in the movie. If it's half as good as the movie is, I, I think I'll really, really enjoy it. So that's been on the list for a while now. Uh, it feels like I've been reading the Millennium Trilogy for years now. And I don't know why, because I love the girl with the dragon tattoo. And I had no problem with the girl who uh, who played with fire. But to finish it off here, the girl who kicked a hornet's nest, um, I think Elizabeth's a phenomenal character, one of the greatest characters of this generation. So uh, saying goodbye to that because I'm not reading the stuff that the original Arthur didn't didn't write. So this would be saying goodbye to that character. Uh, kind of bittersweet, but, uh, but I would be very interested in finally wrapping that up. I love Dark Matter, guys. So, of course, I want to read Recursion by Blake Crouch. If it's even... 
10% as good as Dark Matter, I'm going to have a blast with it because I love Dark Matter. But it seems like people that love recursion are iffy on Dark Matter and people that love Dark Matter are iffy on recursion. So I'm interested to see how I feel about it. Uh, like I said, uh, if it's the same writing style, uh, again, every once in a while you just want a good standalone and that's why you need people like a Michael Crichton or now a Blake Crouch or Andy Weir or something like that to kind of get you through those moments. Oh, if I finish, uh, I, well, I'm going to finish all of us. I'm going to finish Demon of White this month. If I got time, there is this uh, short story uh, by Mr. Rocchio about uh, Hadrian's brother, about what happened after he left uh, his planet in the first book, I think. So, uh, light spoiler there, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'll be getting this in. And I'll have no Rockio content left until the new book comes out next year. And this is one that uh, was kind of going to be a read-along. Not really a read-along. There was a couple of us that wanted to read it on the Discord server. But I kind of put it off because I haven't had time for it. This is Ship of Theseus. Now, you can see it's still in the plastic. Because the thing about this book is apparently it's... I don't even know. Like, it has, like, paraphernalia... <laughs> call it it has stuff inside of it that uh, like like little trinkets and stuff that you're supposed to use for like clues or something i'm not positive i'm not positive i just took the picture but i didn't open it because i want those things to be a surprise to me when i get to them i don't want to actually do that but there are a couple folks in the server that are going to read this along with me so we'll probably get to that sometime this summer if there is time i i don't know i don't know it just depends guys it depends on how how ahead i stay on all this stuff but uh, i'm not removing this plastic until we do that together and uh as for the uh the the manga if i have time i'm gonna be dipping into monster uh monster is one um urasawa i think his name is i just recently found out this guy is like a humongous stephen king fan and he says that his work has been very influential to his works so i might flip monster and 20th century boys that he does because 20th century boys Everyone who's told me is that is the manga version of Stephen King's It. And I'm like, oh my God, why is this the first I've heard about this thing? But also people say Monster is one of the greatest manga ever written because it's just such a compelling storyline. So uh, I would read both. It's just right now it's like, well, which one are you going to read first? You know, that's kind of where it feels like. But I'm glad to be, uh, you know, inserting some of this other stuff into my regular reading schedule. Because like I said, sometimes you need a break and you want just some some happy visuals to look at. I think uh, just kind of revert back to childhood. And I don't want to read anything without some pictures in it. You know, you kind of feel like that because sometimes those Malazan books will break your brain. But guys, that is everything I've got planned for summer of 2021. What do you guys got on the good old TV or anything that you uh, are really interested in that I listed here? Is there anything I didn't mention that you think I should say, screw this, you need to get this in there? Drop in the comments and let me know and I will talk to you there.